sophistication. Soon your buddies will be coming right at you for more than just job or school related advice. We've just covered clothing essentials and outerwear must-haves for post-holiday ensembles. Coming up next on the Ultimate Style Guide. We expose stylish footwears and functional handbags to know what's trending after that fun holiday getaway. Stay tuned after the break. Discover and learn the difficult A to Z terminologies of fashion only here on Fashion Dictionary. Carcanet. A decorative, archaic necklace, chain, collar, or headband. Here on Fashion Dictionary. Welcome back to the Ultimate Style Guide. While outerwear basics offer a fundamental key in prepping for the first day work ensemble, Shoes and bags are also substantial in rounding out the perfect post-vacation wardrobe at the workplace or in school. Get to know the latest must-have additions to your closet to match with your post-holiday wardrobe. If you're still daydreaming about the glorious holiday break coming to an end, consider these Need It Now footwears to pair with your outfit. Whether it's a casual formal or the properly classic shoe, these stylish walking shoes will give you a leg up. A sporty footwear line that resonated elegance and functionality, French shoe brand Lacoste showcased a casual, athletic-driven collection, bringing up the mantra that life is a beautiful sport. Carefully crafted footwear designs, such as laced-up sneakers, knee-high boots, Chelsea's and trainers were some of this season's must-have trends, which embraced modern practicalities that will surely keep you relaxed and comfortable from the city's fast lane world. So for us, we've got a mix between um, sports and casual footwear. So um, sport for us, we've got um, straight set and we've also got straight set and casual. It's a new style for us this season. I'm actually wearing it today as well. Yeah. Um, and our sports collection is inspired by the polos. So the colorways they're in are the best-selling polos. So we like to kind of link what we've, we're doing with clothing with footwear as well. Unveiling an all-inclusive range of monochromatic aesthetics, which were patterned with clean and simple designs. The iconic French label Lacoste consistently stayed true to its classic and timeless footwear aesthetics, which offered an effortless twist of modernity and sophistication. Sure, so we've got two kind of key strategies for the season. So one is to kind of trade up and grow our casual collection. So what we've done here is make sure the materials are really premium. So a lot of really great leather products. Um, we've incorporated comfort into the product. So um, padded cushioning on the heel. So for us, keeping it modern is all about comfort. So people can wear our product in a lifestyle kind of urban environment. But then we've also got our sports um, product as well. And this strategy is all about sport reinvention. So looking at our archive, but bringing those archive styles out. And like I said, bringing them to a more of a modern execution, relevant for today's consumer. With the rising popularity of the athleisure trend, trainers are a must this season. From knitted runners to asymmetrical patterns, rubber shoes will always serve as a perfect gear for the heavy action at work and thereby offer both comfort and style. For classy and sophisticated looks, French shoe brand Colancourt showed us an array of bespoke footwear collection, detailed with high-quality leathers in various designs, 
such as Chelsea boots, Oxfords, black tie shoes, brogues, and even winter boots with fur linings. Uh, what we do is mainly uh, work on leather shoes. So our point is to customize shoes. Um, we have three levels of uh, personalization. The first one is uh, the ready to wear. The second one is all about the colors, the shades. Uh, uh, a client comes and try a, a shoe and uh, can choose the, the, all the details, all the colors we're gonna put on the leather. And it's a handmade uh, walk that we do here in the atelier. Um, and the, the, the last level of customization is all about made to order shoes, uh, meaning that we, we make one and only pair for the clients. As a designer, I put a huge focus on uh, providing things that have a, a real identity. So it's not only about just, you know, launching a new, very basic shoe. Uh, every model has to be perfect to, 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 to meet the clients. Predominantly stylish as it is, Colangecore perfectly transformed plain leather masterpieces into chic, custom-made aesthetics, which suit best for fashion-forward men on the go. Paris-based brand Darren Moore sent off an elegant lineup of women's footwear aesthetics made with state-of-the-art materials in a variety of palettes and designs. From suede ankle boots to high-heeled peep toes, the indulgence of wearing these shoes will definitely step up your poise and boldness, even when the hustle and bustle at work or in school arises. Darren Moore is a Paris-based luxury shoe brand that was launched with an autumn winter 15 capsule collection named after Baudelaire's masterpiece Les Fleurs du Mal. All materials and components come from Italy. Um, I use lots of threads, but in its most smooth and elaborate form. Um, I work with a tannery that makes thread out of baby calf, which improves significantly its quality and um, appearance in terms of softness and comfort. Um, I also really like using glazed calf, um, shielding, embossed leather, leather effect patterns, um, actually everything that creates a distinctive effect. Um, metal details are also visible on my shoes. Um, I love hardware, especially old copper. Um, to me, it shows the passage of time and it makes the shoes more special. Made from the finest calfskin, suede, and matte python, Darren Moore's bespoke creations ultimately exude elegance and sophistication while keeping you trendy and fashionable in full play. Even if you're busy at school or got tied up at work, always consider what footwear you're going to put on. For a certain man once said, wear the right shoe and you can conquer the world. Apart from all those office humdrums and back-to-school routines, there's nothing more exciting than having a new handbag to match with your first day ensemble at work. Here are some stylish bags you need to get your hands on to get over that sweet holiday escapade. For more than a decade in the global market, Swedish brand Sant Vist is still the kind of label that we love to see around. Backpacks are sleek and minimalist, with a bit of rugged versatility. Timeless and functional as it is, Sankt Vist offered a perfect selection of roll-top backpacks, which employ from active outdoorsy to professional niftiness. What defines Sankt Vist? It's probably the love for the good material, uh, the, inspirational, the inspiration that we have from, from Scandinavian uh, nature and also Anton, when he made his uh, first backpacks, he was uh, inspired by military bags. So good, durable materials and a nice and clean Scandinavian look is uh, very important for us.
Sturdy canvases and leathers in mutual tones highlighted each skillfully crafted handbag, which were detailed with pockets, serving each bag section for your books, laptops, pens, and paperwork. Sankt Vist also offers a wide assortment of pouches, wallets, and card holders, ideal for business meetings and special events. again, if you're looking for something chic to carry around, you can also direct your eyes to this London-based brand, Nika, which displays a unique twist of shoulder bags and backpacks that combine quality and individuality with a sense of fun and elegance. So Nika's actually uh, was started by our head designer, Nika Kim. Mm -hmm. So she's from South Korea and she puts a lot of focus into designing bags that are kind of really functional, mm -hmm. really wearable, and she has a lot of emphasis on travel. Um, so a lot of the bags are kind of really fun, they've got really cool prints, really colourful. Which one is your favourite piece? If you have to, I know it's hard, but if you had to pick, which one would it be and why? Um, I think it would have to be this backpack. It's absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. I mean, you can take, wear it day to night again, as I said, and you can have it as a backpack or as a crossbody. Pastel shades of pink and lavender, detailed with tropical patterns and animal prints, Nika handbag collection will definitely be the center of all of your OOTDs at school or at work. And at the same time, these bags will definitely go with anything you have in your closet. British bag designer Lulu Guinness showcased a Pablo Picasso-themed collection, offering a plethora of eccentric yet revolutionary handbags that are sure to complement any outfit that will absolutely keep you thrilled and amused all day long. Featuring rubber lips and lipstick clutches, crossbody saddlebags and perspex bags in shades of pink, black, lavender, baby blue and red. Okay, so this is basically an, a reimagination of all of Lulu's favourite icons. She always has a fascination with the face, obviously the lips being the biggest icon, but also the female face in form. So it's kind of like an abstract interpretation of the face. So there's various different types of faces through the collection. Some that are a little bit more pared back that aren't quite as obvious. And then also a hand sketch design by Lulu, which um, is actually inspired by um, Pablo Picasso, um, Muse Dora Ma, so, which is really beautiful. So every time it's just different takes on that kind of like theme recurring through but just reimagined in different ways. Evolving vintage artistry into mainstream pop culture, hand sketched female faces and big lip forms detailed on the bags perfectly exude femininity and sophistication that suit best for women on the go. You won't just be using it for school, you can take it with you during your travels and adventures even more. As someone said, bags speak louder than words. Handbags are now an essential masterpiece of every modern man and woman's wardrobe and a necessity of daily living. And there you have it. From all of your must-have wardrobe essentials and this season's biggest trends on how to style up your after-break outfits, we've just covered the fundamentals of great style in post-holiday fashion. And that closes our guide to all things trendy and stylish for post-holiday season, bringing you one step ahead of fashion. You're watching The Ultimate Style Guide.
Improve your fashion expertise as we teach you how to pronounce your favorite fashion label with logo origins and key details. Here on Fashion 4Ks, spot the brand. Aldo. Aldo. Founded by Aldo Benzedun in Montreal, Quebec in 1972, this worldwide company operates a chain of shoe and accessory stores. Aldo operates with more than 1,500 corporate-owned and franchise stores in 82 countries worldwide. In 2013, the company had $1.8 billion in revenue. For their 40th anniversary, Aldo revealed a quote, It's because no object is as immediately transformative and empowering as a great shoe. Aldo. Stay tuned as we bring you more of the latest fashion labels, exclusively here on Spot the Brand. Hi, welcome to Model Yoga. I'm Yogi Troy, and in this season of Model Yoga, we'll be focusing on the chakra system. The chakras are the energy centers in your body, and each of the seven chakras corresponds to different mental, energetic, and emotional qualities that are within you. There are seven episodes to correspond with each of the chakras. We'll be increasing your awareness of these energy centers while strengthening, toning, lengthening, and balancing your body and your mind. As a model, gaining awareness of your physical body, your energy, your emotions, and your thoughts will help you to feel more present, calm, balanced, and ready to achieve your maximum potential. Whether you're a beginner or advanced yogi, always remember to listen to your body, move at your own pace, and take the postures as far as is comfortable for you. I'm Yogi Troy, and this is Model Yoga. Today's focus is the third chakra, or the solar plexus chakra, the Manipura chakra. The third chakra is the energy center of self-will, power, and intention. When this energy center is balanced, there is a sense of being comfortable in one's own skin, and you'll have a healthy sense of willpower. In today's poses, we're going to be working on building your confidence and fire inside of you that will drive you throughout your modeling career. We're gonna get started in a comfortable seated position. You can either find a position on your knees or a cross-legged position. And you can just allow your eyes to close, roll your shoulders back and down and away from your ears. Connect with your breath. Deep inhales and slow exhales. As a model, you have to look confident walking down the runway. But there may also be times in your career when you're asked to look vulnerable, or shy. You can create these looks on the outside for the camera and still maintain your inner strength and confidence and knowing who you really are. That you're confident, powerful, and able to take charge when you need to. Today we're going to work on building that confidence and stoking the fire that lies inside of you. You can allow your eyes to open. Make any adjustments to your comfortable seated position. We're going to get started with a breathing exercise today, or a pranayama, called Kapala Bhati, or Breath of Fire. It's trying to increase heat in your physical body, but also will energetically give you confidence. The so long, tall spine. With this breath, we're only focusing on the exhales. So let's bring your fingertips towards your belly button. And as you exhale, it's going to be just a sharp, thrusting exhale out of your nose. So your mouth is closed and the exhale is like this. Try that one more time. Inhale and now at the same time that you're exhaling out of the nose, you're going to pull your belly button in towards your spine. So you'll exhale and pull your belly button in. We don't focus on the inhale. The inhale just happens naturally. So try again. Exhale and then let your belly relax. Exhale, and relax. Exhale, and then we try and find a rhythm. So we're just practicing. Once you have that down, we'll relax your hands down. Roll your shoulder blades back and down and away from your ears. We'll set this up by taking a, a full inhale or a 100% inhale. 
we'll exhale everything out. And we take a 75% inhale before we get started with the Kapalabhati, so we have some room for the breath to enter into our lungs. So let's exhale everything out. You can do this with your eyes open or your eyes closed. Deep inhale, try and inhale fully 100% of your lungs. And then it's just a soft open mouth exhale. This time we inhale to 75%. You inhale 75%. And then we start the Kapalabhati. Go at the pace that works for you. We're going to try and do 10 more. Last five, four, three, two, one. Keep your eyes closed and take a deep inhale. And then just a soft open mouth exhale. Receive the effects. We're actually going to do two rounds. The second round we're going to do, try and get to 30. So bring your awareness back to your inhale and your exhale. Exhale everything out. Deep inhale through your nose. Inhale up to 100%. Soft open mouth exhale. 75% inhale. And then Kapalabhati. Last five, four, three, two, one. Deep inhale, 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 and have a slight hold at the top of your inhale. And then just allow a soft open mouth exhale. Pausing just for a moment to receive the effects of your Kapalabhati, your breath of fire. And we'll just slowly make your way to a neutral tabletop position. Spreading your fingers nice and wide, knees out to about hip width apart. Curl your toes under, and we'll press back to down dog. Settle in. We'll do a little bit more breathing here. Find stillness. With your inhale, soften your knees down to the mat. Bend your knees. Exhale and extend. Inhale and soften your knees, and then exhale and extend. We'll do three more. Inhale down. Inhale down. Exhale. Inhale down last time, forceful exhale. Inhale, look up in between your hands. Gradually walk your feet up in between your hands. We'll take a gentle inhale to a flat back. And exhale and a fold forward. And the inhale and reverse swan dive all the way up towards standing. Flow your palms down into your heart center. And we're going to be right back with some more energizing postures. Discover and learn the difficult A to Z terminologies of fashion only here on Fashion Dictionary. Glossier. Smooth and shiny, lustrous finish. Here on Fashion Dictionary. In this next set of postures, we are going to get moving, so prepare to sweat a little bit. We'll be moving through a sequence of postures called the Sun Salutation. There are many variations of the sun salutation, and today we'll be going over just a couple. During your movements, try to think about the energy and fire of the sun, but also think about the fire that burns inside of you, your drive to be anything you want to be. We're going to get started in standing today. Connect with your inhales and your exhales. When your next inhale comes, float your arms up and overhead. Just to connect with your breath, exhale your hands back down in the direction of your hips. We'll get started with Chandrasana today. So Chandrasana is moon pose. We'll interlace all of the fingers except the index fingers. So just releasing the index fingers. Bring your biceps back in the direction of your ears. Not going past, just hovering the biceps right around the ears. Bring your toes towards the center of your mat. And we'll just start by scratching your back up against an imaginary wall behind you. 
begin with gentle movements before we go into the full expression of the posture. We'll come back towards neutral. Root down through the soles of your feet. Try and keep the pressure in your feet 50-50, left and right. We'll start by going towards your right today. So gradually start to tilt towards your right. We're working on lengthening the left side of your torso. So lengthening from the left hip, the left rib cage, all the way up and out of your fingers. We'll try and take one more inhale, find a little bit more length. Exhale. And then when your inhale comes, we'll float back up. We'll bring your hands into your heart center just to give your shoulders a little breather. And we'll go right to the other side. Inhale the arms up and overhead. On an exhale, drift towards your left. Opening up the opposite side. We'll be trying to breathe into the right rib cage and feel length. Right hip to the right shoulder, all the way up and out of the fingers. Pull your belly button towards your spine, last exhale. And then when your inhale comes, float right back up to standing. Release your hands and bring your hands down in the direction of your hips. You can roll the shoulders back. And then on your next inhale, float the arms up and overhead up to extended mountain or Utita Tadasana. And with your exhale, swan dive forward. Coming into Uttanasana or a standing forward fold. With an inhale, find a halfway lift or a long flat back, long spine. With your exhale, soften your knees, plant your hands, step both feet back to high plank. So there's different variations of plank. High plank with the knees up, you want a strong straight line from your heels to your hips, to your shoulders and out of the crown of your head. Or you can find modified plank. We still have a strong straight line, but now it's from the knees to the hips, to the shoulders and out of the crown of the head. With your exhale, we'll lower all the way down towards your mat. Glide your elbows past your ribs. Uncurl your toes and we'll set up for baby cobra pose. So for baby cobra pose, your hips are on the mat, your chest is on the mat, and then exhale and inhale and peel your chest up off of the mat. There's little to no pressure in the hands, so you should be able to hover your hands just slightly. They're kind of there for balance. Your gaze is nice and soft towards the front. Take one more inhale and find a little bit more lift. Awesome. When your exhale comes, we'll lower down. And then with the transition to tabletop, you can either roll up and over your feet to down dog, or you can float through tabletop and then press back to down dog. Send your hips high, let your heels drift as low as they want to drift today. We'll go through the next variation of the sun salutation. Inhale, look up in between your hands. When you're ready, walk both feet up in between your hands. Inhale up to a halfway lift, flat back. Exhale and fold forward. Try and make each exhale count. Inhale and reverse swan dive all the way up towards standing. Exhale is just a simple circle of your hands and we're gonna keep moving. Exhale the hands down in the direction of your hips. With your inhale, float the arms right back up and overhead. Swan dive, lead with your heart. Exhale into Uttanasana or standing forward fold. Inhale is a flat back. This is just a repetition of the same thing. With your exhale, soften your knees, plant your hands, step both feet back to high plank, knees up, or low plank, knees down. For this version, we're going to lower just halfway down. So bend the elbows and try and lower just halfway down so your elbows are at about a 90 degree angle, and then we'll inhale up to up dog. So for up dog, the wrists are directly beneath the shoulders, and you're really trying to Roll the shoulders back, find a long, tall spine, and you can even try and squeeze a little imaginary pencil back between your shoulder blades. Here we're lengthening everything from the tips of your toes all the way up and out of the crown of your head. Transition to down dog either through tabletop or just floating up and over your feet. Exhale. With your inhale, look up in between your hands. Same transitions, walk both feet up in between your hands. Inhale is to a flat back. Exhale, unfold. Gradually get into a, into a rhythm with your breath. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to Utita Tadasana. Exhale, let the hands drift down in the direction of your hips. Great job. Inhale, your arms right back up. 
Exhale, dive forward, swan dive. E inhale is to a flat back. Exhale, soften your knees, plant your hands, step both feet back to high or modified plank. Now it's your choice to either lower all the way down to the mat and do baby cobra, or just to lower halfway down and inhale up to up dog. Exhale is back to down dog, choosing your transition through tabletop or rolling up and over your feet. Last one, inhale and draw your gaze up in between your hands, walk your feet up in between your hands. Same thing, inhale to a flat back. Exhale and fold. This is where I really want you to own your practice. Inhale and reverse swan dive all the way up to standing. Move with your breath. Exhale the arms back down. Great job. Inhale the arms up. Exhale and swan dive forward. Your breath, your movement. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, soften your knees, plant your hands. Take your variation, knees up or knees down. Lower all the way down or halfway down and inhale up to baby cobra, cobra or up dog. Exhale is right back to down dog. Now feel free to hold in down dog or you can release to child's pose. While you're in either one of the postures, try and focus on the cooling energy of the Chandrasana pose or the moon pose and also focus on the warming fire energy of the sun salutation. We'll be right back. Discover and learn the difficult A to Z terminologies of fashion, only here on Fashion Dictionary. Brazier, undergarment usually worn by women to support and give contour to the breasts. Here on Fashion Dictionary. Now we're gonna be moving on to some warrior postures so you can find your inner confident warrior. To be a model, you have to be courageous, brave, and always believe in yourself. So gather up your energy, feel the warrior within you, and we'll meet you in down dog. Exhale everything out in down dog. With your next inhale, float your right heel high to a three-legged down dog. We're trying to keep your hips square down to, towards the mat in a strong straight line from your right wrist to your right hip and all the way out of your right heel. When your exhale comes, step your right foot up in between your hands. We'll find a low lunge and we're setting up for warrior one. Try and maintain the right knee above your right ankle and then pivot your left heel down towards the mat. The left toes are off at a 45 degree angle and inhale and float your arms up. Make any adjustments to where you'd like your right foot to land wherever feels comfortable for your right knee. Grow long and tall out of the spine. And then we'll come into Kapalabhati, the same thing we did at the beginning of the practice with the pulsing of the stomach and thrusting exhales out of the nose. So e inhale three quarters of the breath and then three stomach pulses. E inhale. E inhale. Take a deep inhale, and then we'll transition into warrior two with your exhale. For warrior two, you're walking your right foot over so that your feet are on a tightrope, and all of the joints are in one line. Subtle tucking of the tail, and there's just subtle little adjustments trying to stack your shoulders above your hips, strong legs, belly button drawn in towards your spine. With your next inhale, flip your hands up and then we'll start to do some gentle bicep curls. Exhale and pull, inhale and extend. Exhale and pull, inhale and extend. Exhale and pull, two more. Inhale fully, make every breath count. Exhale, pull, inhale and reach. Exhale and pull. This time, inhale and reach. Exhale, relax your shoulders, freeze your legs, and then inhale and find reverse warrior. For reverse warrior, you're trying to lengthen from the right hip to the right rib cage, all the way up and out of the right middle finger. Choose your next exhale to cartwheel your hands down to a low lunge. Pivot onto the ball of your back foot. And then I'm gonna ask Seki and Barbie to do a modified version here, lowering the left knee down. 
and we'll open up with a gentle twist, taking your left hand down, right hand up. And Summer and Kimmy will be doing a fuller version with the back knee up. Floating the right hand up, pressing down to lift, feeling nice and open in your chest. And then for a modified version of side plank, Barbie and Seki will be floating the right foot back, reaching up to the sky, and then Kimmy and Summer will do the full version of side plank. This takes a lot of core strength, helps you to build your confidence, building your arm strength, try and reach up and touch the sky. Last inhale, and then with your exhale, it'll be a slow transition down to tabletop. Pause just for a moment there to set up for down dog. Spread your fingers nice and wide and push the mat away from you. Just gonna keep moving. Inhale your left heel high, we'll switch to the other side. When your exhale comes, step your left foot up in between your hands. We'll set up for warrior one on the opposite side. Be the same posture as pivot your right heel down. Inhale your arms up. Find your breath when you exhale. Take a three quarter inhale, we'll set up for Kapalabhati breathing, three pulses. Inhale, inhale, take one more deep inhale, and we'll transition to warrior two. Aligning all of the joints, take a full inhale, flip your palms face up, and then find the bicep curls with your exhale. Inhale and extend, lengthen the collarbones, exhale, biceps getting stronger, inhale and reach. Exhale, great job. Two more, inhale and reach. Exhale and pull. One more, inhale and reach. Exhale and pull. This time, inhale and reach. Exhale, relax your shoulders. And then inhale and find reverse warrior. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Make this the fullest inhale you've taken all practice. And then choose your exhale and cartwheel your hands down to a low lunge. Take the modifications you did on the opposite side, knee up or knee down, and then we're gonna find the twist. Press the right hand down, let your left hand float up to the sky. Pressing down while still lifting up, feeling a full opening of the chest, and then take your modified version of side plank or full version of side plank. There's no rush to get there, take your time. Float the left foot back, keep breathing, Really go for it. Push yourself to lift the hip a little higher. Maybe even try and float your left foot. Last inhale. And then with your exhale, back down to tabletop. Take one full inhale. Rest in child's pose. You deserve a nice break after all of that movement. We're gonna be right back with some more core strengthening postures. Discover and learn the difficult A to Z terminologies of fashion, only here on Fashion Dictionary. Broderie Anglaise, a type of lace fabric that is white cotton based with a pattern of small holes that have embroidered edges, often used in children's wear and blouses. Here on Fashion Dictionary. Welcome back. We only have a few postures left before we get you into relaxation pose. First, we're gonna strengthen your core a little bit more, and then we're gonna lengthen those same muscles with another posture to give you that long, lean look that all models are looking for. From child's pose, inhale up to a neutral tabletop, and lift up to plank. Curl your toes under, lift your knees up, Strong straight line from your heels to your hips to your shoulders. Then we're gonna move into forearm plank. This is gonna be challenging, but we're almost to the end. Lower your elbows down to the mat. Palms are face down. Wrists are about shoulders distance apart. Really try and press through your heels and breathe. Feel the fire building in your core. Strong legs. If you can imagine trying to pull your toes towards your elbows, Contracting the entire front side of your body. Take one more deep inhale, you can do it. Deep inhale, and then when your exhale comes, lower down to your mat, lower your knees, great job. 
We'll press up to a tabletop. Then we're going to make your way to seated. Swinging your legs around. Try and extend your legs out towards the front edge of your mat. Walk your heels all the way up and then bring the soles of your feet to the mat. We're going to set up for boat pose, another really good core strengthener. We'll move, be moving through four different variations. So for the first one, float your arms towards the front, palms face up, and then lean back just to about a 45 degree angle. Try and roll your chest open and let your gaze just drift towards the top front corner of the room. Great job. Keep breathing there. And the next step of this, we're going to have Barbie remain here. The next step, we're all going to float your feet up and then cup your hands underneath your thighs. Trying to keep the shins nice and parallel to the floor. And Seki's going to stay here. We're going to have Summer keep her shins parallel, release the hands. And then Kimmy's going to come into the full version of boat pose. Try and take one big deep inhale, open your chest. One more deep inhale, find your full expression, roll your chest open. And then exhale and lower the feet down. Awesome job. Come back to seated and we'll inhale your arms up and overhead. And then with your next exhale, lower all the way down towards your mat. We'll set up for a relaxing posture and supported bridge. So reaching for your block. We're trying to Place the block right underneath your sacrum. So bring the soles of your feet to the mat. Lift your hips up and then place the block right underneath your sacrum. You're trying to avoid contact of the block with your spine and try not to get it too low on your hips so it's down by the tailbone. Try and keep it right in between. Once you've found stability here with the block, extend your legs long. If that's not comfortable, just come back to the feet on your mat. Deep inhales and nice slow exhales. Allow yourself to relax here and take in all of the benefits and effects of your efforts today. Feel the rise and fall and allow yourself to find comfort in being who you are and being comfortable in your skin. Each exhale surrendering a little bit deeper. Feeling the lengthening happening in your hip flexors, the muscles, connecting your legs up to your hips. We'll take one more deep inhale, feel a gentle stretch from the tips of your toes all the way up to the shoulders. And to release, bring the soles of your feet back to the mat. Lift your hips up slightly, slide the block out from underneath you. Lower your hips down towards the mat. Give yourself a nice long stretch, reach your arms up and overhead, extend your legs long. And then exhale, bring your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a gentle little squeeze. And we'll roll over to your side. And just press your way up to a comfortable seated position with your eyes closed. Long, tall spine, deep inhales and slow exhales. Take a deep breath down into your solar plexus and core. Feel all of the strength you've developed. Feel the confidence vibrating out of your center yourself. Allow your eyes to open. Excellent work today. You worked really hard and hopefully you broke a sweat. A great teacher, BKS Iyengar, once said, in order to get out of your head, you have to break a sweat. And we hope that you did both of those today. Make sure to drink plenty of water. Take care of your new, powerful, and confident self. Until next time, I'm Yogi Troy, and this is Model Yoga. Namaste. To have me, you're too cool to have me around. No time for attitude. I'm just not in the mood. So liberated, anticipating my greatness while you hate it.
from Tom Ford's animal print to the colored furs at Michael Kors and Dion Lee, or the hottest pinks at Alexander Wang. Plus Calvin Klein and Jason Wu's hipster plaids. We've got you covered on the runway's biggest trends. There's no stopping to the trends of fall winter at Runway Frenzy. Every Tuesday and Friday, London, 1900, DST, Paris, 2000, DST, Moscow, 2100. From Tom Ford's animal print to the colored furs at Michael Kors and Dion Lee, or the hottest pinks at Alexander Wang. Plus Calvin Klein and Jason Wu's hipster plaids. We've got you covered on the runway's biggest trends. There's no stopping to the trends of fall winter at Runway Frenzy. Tracksuit trousers were donned by middle-aged football coaches or teenagers. Though we often uphold the tearing of sweats for a more better ensemble, there's a particular time and place where this relaxed lounging look is put on. And it has nothing to do with sports or indoor wear. Times have changed. You are watching Runway Frenzy and today is when sportswear meets runway. Dress down might be the initial impact of tracksuits, but there's never anything low-key about this when it hit the fashion runway. I still what you Alexander Wang navigated the runway with a space gray tracksuit, off the shoulder or covering the neck that are futuristically trancing all the same. Tommy Hilfiger delivers premium styling in mesmerizing red cropped hooded sweat with low waist fitted black trousers. Fyodor Galan elevates edgy styles to new heights, an ambiance embedded with a spectrum of colors that exuded a thoroughly playful spirit. The sweeping skirt layered over the tracksuit challenged the traditional rules of luxury leisure wear. Valentino embodies the sleek and graceful with the all-black tracksuit paired with short bomber and white sneakers that created an elemental revision of urban repertoire. I can hold it. Eco Say rolls in the statement tracksuit piece over a long black coat with a black sweatband that's adopted and rightfully owned by any badass appeal. In New York, Tad Snader effortlessly blended a modern tracksuit with a schoolboy sweater in hues of blue that mixed the modern vibes with a nostalgic college look. This humble sporting two-piece has had all manners hurled to it over the years. Snobbish mockery or the vagaries of fashion, but it surpassed them all. It's not just surviving, it's thriving in the fashion era. And it won't be a surprise if tracksuits are bringing in much to the bank. The step up to its renaissance is now tenfold. You've just seen the biggest trends straight from the Fashion Week catwalks, exclusively on Runway Frenzy. Discover and learn the difficult A to Z terminologies of fashion, only here on Fashion Dictionary. Chenille, a mostly plain weave heavy fabric woven with tufted cord of cotton, silk, or worsted, commonly used for sweaters and trimming. Here on Fashion Dictionary.
From Tom Ford's animal print to the colored furs at Michael Kors and Dion Lee, or the hottest pinks at Alexander Wang, plus Calvin Klein and Jason Wu's hipster plaids, we've got you covered on the runway's biggest trends. There's no stopping to the trends of fall, winter at Runway Frenzy. That 90s nostalgia of claw clips, bandanas, bucket hats, and whatnots, the hipster plaid is making a comeback in the fashion zeitgeist. 
long shirt dresses stylishly layered, a few luxury spins here and there, each having different fashionable takes on the checkered print. You are watching Runway Frenzy, and today is a flip back of this eclectic collection that's about to re-enter the fashion scene. Numerous runways are highlighting the plaid ensembles that have made the 90s Beverly Hills feel so recognizable. Plaids may be caught somewhere between classic and trend-forward fare, but they still surely are head-turners all the same. For Gucci, it's an assortment of looks from turbans to donning half balaclavas and oversized plaid blazers. Despite the mix of contrasting colors, Christian Dior broke up the runway with monochrome looks ranged from layered ensembles to a comparatively understated sheer top. Versace naturally played the styling with proportions, a contrasting short skirt and boxy blazer. Nicole Miller leans towards the street style brand with some plaid topper and skin tight trousers and ankle boots that's a nod to the ultimate throwback. And Olivia's take is on the dark and brooding side, with long gypsy style plaid dresses topped with a squared camel coat or a studded leather jacket and ankle boots. Burberry is all for this sporty look in matching plaid baggy top and cap and neon loose pants in looks that could either be a sporty chic or exuding boyish charms. were layered on top of each other in looks ranging from the casual, stitched up with a leather jacket, to the formal monochromatic tones. Power suiting and pops of neon that could be paired either with vertiginous platforms or sporty sneakers is entirely up to you. The hipster plaid trend has never been this cool. Never missed out fashion, only on Runway Frenzy.
Improve your fashion expertise as we teach you how to pronounce your favorite fashion label with logo origins and key details. Here on Fashion 4Ks, spot the brand L'Oreal. L'Oreal. L'Oreal is the world's largest cosmetics company, founded during 1909 by Eugene Schuler. The L'Oreal Paris brand covers the four major beauty categories, hair color, cosmetics, hair, and skin care. The name started when Eugene, as a young chemist, created his first hair dye formula under the name L'Oreal. L'Oreal Group is number 34 of Forbes' list of world's most valuable brands, with a market value of $106.6 billion. The name L'Oreal is immediately associated with the brand's signature phrase, because you're worth it. It represents the essence of the brand in helping every woman embrace her unique beauty and reinforcing her sense of self-worth. L'Oreal. Stay tuned as we bring you more of the latest fashion labels, exclusively here on Spot the Brand. Fulham Road in yeah. London, uh, a great destination for shopping, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's something very easy and classic to wear. It's um, my style is all structured and classic, mainly inspired by architecture. A lot of architecture with an design. As I can see, you are, what you are wearing is structured and architectural. Thank you. So. I'm glad. I'm glad I've got like a seal of approval. That's really kind. <laughs> Inspiration comes from different different channels, let's say. It. Uh, sometimes I can look at a book or and I can come up with an idea or walking on the street or driving or anything or traveling. Even on the plane, you see a cloud and you all of a sudden come up with an idea. It's, a, it's amazing what the mind can do if you're creative. Do, that's if you're a creative person. Most people probably can't do look at a cloud and <laughs> come up with a collection. That's not really like stereotypically normal. I can't do that. I wish I could. Well, that's I think you, yes, you come up with an idea and then you go and make researches and yes, you, yes. We, with my first collection it was uh, Frank Gehry architecture right, and I love Frank Gehry. I think it's just, um, yeah, it's the future, it's a beautiful uh, architectural um, inspiration and I think it, he has such a beautiful lines to imply them with, an, with an, a blouse yeah. like that, I think it's just wonderful. creating clothes to opening up your very own boutique yeah. because um, it's one thing having a label but opening up a store as well that's like massive yes I have a little experience from before I did run a boutique before mm -hmm. uh, which used to hold like luxury brands like Cavalli, Armani, Scada and so on and I used to be the main buyer and the merchandiser yep. so I used to go to all of the fashion uh, shows and um, fashion houses to order the stock and everything so yes I have the knowledge of the of, of the inside out business which is wonderful does that help absolutely yes it does a lot so would you recommend that to others if they're thinking right I want to open my own store one day maybe I want to create my own label one day you'd say get by for someone else first uh, yes it does help it's, I think it's it, it, the main thing in, in general I think in business uh, it's uh, to have experience yep. experience is the number one and obviously the drive your desire what you want to achieve Boutique store here in 
Chelsea is absolutely gorgeous. I fall in love with so many of the pieces and the designer's architectural style of design is really conceptual yet extremely commercial, meaning that you're going to look absolutely great and have some really unique pieces. Sadly, that's all I've got time for tonight, but you can catch me next time on the network where we bring you the hottest fashion news straight from London. See you soon. Bonjour, je m'appelle Alexia Tronel, je suis la cofondatrice de la marque Atelier Bartavel avec Caroline Perdry. La marque Atelier Bartavel habille un public assez large, que ça peut être assez jeune comme 30 ans, même jusqu'à 60, 70. Du coup, on développe plusieurs formes qui finalement vont à des femmes différentes et à des âges différents. C'est une marque responsable et spécialisée sur les pièces de dessus, donc les gilets, les manteaux, les vestes, les perfecto. La Bartavelle, c'est la perdrie royale, c'est la perdrie du Sud, en clin d'œil à Caroline. Donc en fait, la collection été s'appelle Les Ilettes. C'est une collection qui est inspirée à la base de Pierrot le Fou de Godard. Il y a une partie du film qui se passe sur l'île de Porquerolles. En fait, toutes les inspirations de la marque sont dans le sud et dans Marseillaise. Donc, il y a pas mal de références au langage de la mer, entre guillemets, avec les pavillons, euh, les découpes euh, qui font référence aux découpes de voile. Et dans les matières aussi, on a une toile de coton qui est assez épaisse et assez dense, qui reprend un peu les voiles de bateau. Euh, on a quand même des tissus transparents et plus légers. Et du cuir aussi. Et pareil, on retrouve les découpes dans le dos qui euh, permettent vraiment d'identifier la marque. Pour les couleurs, euh, on reste aussi euh, sur les codes euh, un peu marins avec du rouge, du bleu, du blanc euh, et du nude et également du safran. Ce qui nous tient à cœur, c'est l'histoire que nous racontons. Euh, on a envie que chacune de nos pièces raconte une histoire singulière. Euh, par exemple, l'étoffe rare euh, de chaque pièce, le savoir-faire de l'atelier, le savoir-faire de l'artisan, et puis euh, la personne qui va porter la veste. Et donc on a ch sur chacune de nos vestes euh, une petite étiquette euh, euh, qui va mettre en valeur la traçabilité. Donc par exemple, pour celles qui sont euh, produites à Marseille, on a euh, fabriqué à Marseille par Jackie. Et bientôt, on va avoir sur les manches de nos pièces un œil protecteur. Euh, et cet œil donc, va, va servir à, à protéger chaque femme qui porte nos vestes. Voilà. L'idée, c'est que déjà, il y a une traçabilité du vêtement de A à Z. On sait d'où viennent les tissus, donc c'est des fournisseurs euh, italiens avec qui j'ai déjà travaillé dans d'autres maisons et du coup j'avais envie de continuer parce que je connaissais leur qualité. Et, euh, ensuite au niveau de la confection, on, on est à Marseille et à Porto. C'est euh, des ateliers d'insertion. J'avais vraiment envie qu'on puisse créer une marque qui, euh, qui mette en valeur la traçabilité de chaque pièce. Et, euh, et donc, on, on a fondé Atelier Bartavel avec cette idée-là. Après, pour cette collection, on a aussi fait un partenariat avec une ONG qui s'appelle Siwa en Inde. Et c'est des brodeuses du Gujarat qui ont brodé trois pièces de notre collection. Et comme euh, la marque euh, puise toute son inspiration dans le sud, dans, la, dans Marseille, dans la mer, on a, vraiment, euh, on a aussi nos ateliers qui sont à Marseille. Voilà, il y a vraiment un ancrage euh, sur la Bartavel et le sud.
Welkom in onze nieuwe winkel in de Nationale Straat. Ik ben Lauren en samen met mijn mama, Pascal Macelis, hebben we een juwelierszaak in de Zurichstraat. Mijn mama al 25 jaar en sinds dit jaar hebben we een tweede winkel in de Nationale Straat opengedaan. In het hart van de mode van Antwerpen. En um, we maken al onze stukken in eigen atelier en het zijn allemaal unieke stukken. Um, we werken heel vaak naar de klant toe, dus mensen komen naar hier en uh, willen echt iets speciaals voor hun gemaakt. Heel veel met natuurlijke vormen en elementen in ons ontwerpen. Um, we vertrekken heel vaak van kleurstenen, dat is zeker een specialiteit van ons. Um, en dan kiezen we onze steen specifiek uit en maken we daar eigenlijk een ontwerp rond. Um, we werken veel met uh, warme tinten, maar in principe kunnen we wel alles en er kan alles gemaakt worden. Gerusteen is in onze nieuwe winkel in het Modehart van Antwerpen voor onze collectie te ontdekken en eventueel samen in je wereld te ontwerpen. Hi, I'm Seyed Sohail. I write the fashion blog The Prep Guide. My sense of style is generally really preppy. Uh, today I want to be a little bit more minimal. So I'm wearing a Perry Ellis Runway Collection blazer from Spring Summer 15. Uh, Tom's sunglasses and boots. I'm wearing a Michael Kors Collection coat. Uh, RW & Co pants and Belova watch. On a typical day, I would dress a little more relaxed, uh, a little more casual, but it's still pretty polished. My name is Selena Delvasto. I am a fashion and fitness blogger. Today I am wearing fall colors. <laughs> um, I have my red sack bag. It's the fall winter collection. I have shoes by Nine West on and they have a really nice pattern. I also have this leather jacket by Armani Exchange. I have a top by Wilfred on. It matches with my purse. I like the burgundy kind of color. And I have my favorite watch by Gucci on. <laughs> I would describe my style as a mix of everything. I like sexy, chic, classy kind of looks. DJ's burning it up. DJ's burning it up. DJ's burning it up. DJ's burning it up. Up, up. You'll catch Hi, I'm Jakeen Martin, also known as Jake, and I'm the blogger for Fashion According to Jake. My sense of style is a bit of a mixture. Sometimes I could be street style, sometimes I could also be dapper, depending on what mood I am when I wake up. So today I'm wearing this um, gorgeous printed Zara blazer jacket that I purchased last year. A Fury shirt. I have my Ray-Ban sunglasses with me, which is always handy. A Belova watch, which keeps me in time. I have a Calvin Klein belt and trouser with me. And my shoes are from black and brown. The very favorite thing that we're wearing today would be my watch because it's new. I love something new. And it's something classic and timeless that I think match with my wardrobe most of the time. 
So if you're coming to Canada for the first time and you happen to come during the colder months, it's time for you to come and purchase a new coat. And it's also a good way to layer up. Discover and learn the difficult A to Z terminologies of fashion only here on Fashion Dictionary. Hi, Lo. This is the mullet of tops and skirts, short in the front and longer in the back, though far less frowned upon in the fashion circles. Here on Fashion Dictionary. Él es Mati, él es Lucas y esto es King of the Congo. Con Mati arrancamos este proyecto hace más o menos un año, un año y medio. Empezamos como a darle un poco de forma a lo que ven hoy, que es King of the Congo. Y estamos, la verdad, súper felices porque nos dimos cuenta que la respuesta de la gente es excelente. La ropa apunta a ser ropa divertida, fresca descontracturada y para todo tipo de público. La idea surgió un poco también viendo que toda la ropa era muy igual. Nosotros dijimos, ¿por qué no hay cosas un toque más jugadas como en otras partes del mundo? Y ahí surgió la idea entre los dos. Dijimos, bueno, hagamos un par de, de remeras locas a ver si funciona. Y cuando probamos, hicimos la primera tirada, armamos todo con un montón de esfuerzo. O sea, mucho laburo por detrás eh, y la verdad que fue un boom, o sea, hicimos las primeras, volaron y así empezó y por suerte no paró hasta ahora. Nuestra marca arrancó más que nada en verano, es una marca que se asocia un poco con, con los colores del verano, con el calor, con estar cómodo, con estar fresco y arrancamos Además, con, de, con musculosas y remeras, con short de baño, que eso fue uno de nuestros íconos, la verdad, del, del verano. La gente venía y se compraba de a dos, de a tres, y, y porque justamente le gustaba eso, como la propuesta que es muy distinta entre uno y otro. Cambian los colores, cambia el tipo de imagen, cambia el tipo de estampa, cambia todo. Así que este, este invierno fue como nuestro primer desafío, porque nunca habíamos hecho nada. Eh, ninguna prenda así invernal con tanta información de verano y salimos con los buzos que la verdad fueron, fueron un éxito también. La verdad que la moda en Argentina es muy, muy prometedora en todo sentido y hay mucha propuesta de diseñadores independientes que hoy es como lo más, lo más llamativo. Las marcas eh, tienen, tienen prendas, pero por ahí se tiran un poco más a lo, a lo clásico, a lo que no es tan jugado. Obviamente es como, se, se puede vender más fácil quizás. Entonces muchas marcas optan por ir a lo seguro. La idea y lo interesante de nuestra marca, al igual que muchos otros emprendedores, es justamente romper el molde, salir de ahí y proponer cosas nuevas, proponer cosas distintas. Y creo que eso es eh, lo que buscamos todos. Nosotros con Mati, cuando arrancamos con la marca, esperábamos eh, que de un outfit, de un look total, puedas estar vestido completamente básico y la prenda nuestra sea la, la estrella, como la frutilla del postre. De, del look que tengas armado, con una campera, una remera de King of the Congo, no necesitas más nada, que ya estás perfecto para ir a, a la disco, para ir a cenar o, o lo que sea. La idea también es ir sumando todo el tiempo productos nuevos. Nosotros arrancamos por ahí con algo como muy puntual, que eran mallas, o sea, shorts, y algunas remeras, y queremos empezar a sumarle otro tipo de productos, como camisas que están por salir, vamos a sumar otro tipo de camperas, camperas más livianas, vamos a sumar además lo que son pantalones, chupines, 
todo súper skinny, bien roto. La realidad es que tenemos muchos proyectos y muchas ganas de sumar un montón de, de, de prendas y estamos como en la búsqueda de poder agregar todo ese conjunto de cosas sin perder la esencia de la marca. Mi nombre es Cintia Cohen, soy artista plástica. Trabajamos acá, somos artistas los que trabajamos y, digamos, todas las ideas surgen desde ese lugar. Hay bolsos, tazas, eh, bandejas, no sé, ropa, pero todo tiene un trasfondo que está muy ligado al arte, digamos. Y un lugar también donde no exista la obra como producto, pero sí los derivados de las obras de los artistas. O un tipo de obra que no es la de una galería de arte, sino es una obra mucho más accesible, directa, como una salida también para los artistas, donde el arte sea parte de lo cotidiano. Estamos en Recoleta, la recepción del público fue muy genial porque no, hay, no es Palermo Viejo, Palermo donde hay lugares un poco más descontracturados o, o con otras eh, propuestas, entonces somos como una, un lugarcito donde eh, vienen a ver un poco qué pasa. Al principio la gente entraba y no entendía qué, qué era y, y, y hubieran personas que realmente se enojaban, entraban y decían, pero no entiendo qué es esto, pero no entiendo qué venden, ¿Qué ropa, eh, cosas para el hogar, es como que hay un punto en donde todavía acá en Buenos Aires no existe tanto la opción de ir a un lugar y poder encontrar desde, no sé, un condimento de Narda Lépez que teníamos al principio con un buzo de Jessica Trossman, con obras de artistas, con libros, discos. Es como una suerte de resumen editado que, bueno, cada vez está siendo más entendido, pero al principio costó un poco. Están gestionando remates acá que son muy geniales con la colaboración de otros artistas, digamos. Esto todo el tiempo son ideas que que no son eh, 100% comerciales, pero sí son ideas potentes como para romper un poco el criterio de ciertos lugares que tienen que ver con el arte, la moda, el diseño. Este es un lugar así, pero que al mismo tiempo hay una potencia de artista que se siente. Mi nombre es Zoe Di Rienzo, eh, soy parte del equipo de La Unión, artista y martillera pública. Decidí estudiar eh, para ser martillero público para poder vincular en algún punto la performance y, y este acto de la venta de obra. Hay algo que está latiendo y que está vibrando todo el tiempo y el comprador está ahí. Todo lo que antecede y, y sucede en el remate tiene que ver con un trabajo de performance que estoy realizando. Mi nombre es Sofía Dorrié, soy artista y también soy parte del staff de la Onion. Nos convocaron a un grupo de artistas. El ejercicio fue ver qué se puede hacer con un bolso que lo desnaturalice o que exacerbe su función, qué cosas que yo tra trabajo en mi obra podían ¿no? aparecer de una manera más o menos funcional. La intención es que la obra sea accesible a la gente, o sea, que la gente eh, venza un poco el temor que hay, porque el, el gran público por lo general no consume arte porque considera que es una cosa de estatus o algo como, ¿no? No, no para. Entonces, eh, está bueno como atravesar un poco esa barrera teniendo precios más accesibles, poniéndolo en el medio de otros objetos, como bueno, la verdad que si vos querés podés tener arte en tu casa, no es imposible, no necesitas pertenecer a ningún circuito rarísimo, está, está al lado de una taza, va a estar en tu casa también en la pared. Entonces, en ese sentido, me parece que es como un buen, un buen matrimonio, digamos. Básicamente todo lo que vendemos es hecho acá en Argentina por artistas, diseñadores, músicos, to todo es nacional, no es un local donde acá vas a poder encontrar lo mismo que en 100 locales más. Es realmente un lugar donde si alguien quiere hacer un regalo, comprar o lo que sea algo original, fuera de lo común, eh, este es el lugar.
such an honor to be here tonight for the grand opening of the Marie St. Pierre Boutique right here in the very busy, always exciting, always artful Wynwood District. Come with us. We're going to be looking at all the great fashion that we have here tonight. We'll be exploring her collection and hopefully we get a chat with the woman herself, Marie St. Pierre. Stay with us. It's really very hard to choose your favorite piece from the Marie St. Pierre collection, but I'm really in love with this one. I'm a feathers girl. I love a nice statement piece. This kind of reminds me of like a nice statement necklace, but it's feather, it's light, it's sleek. It can be a dress. I can pair it with jeans and make it fun and interesting. I really, really love the pieces with the feather. There's another feather piece that she has that I'm very interested in. I like the contrast with the black and then the two tones that's going on here. It's really, really special. I love the fact too that her collection is very eco-friendly it's very technical there's a lot of depth and structure very very artful i'm so in love with this collection we're going to take a look at some more pieces so honored to be speaking with the woman of the hour first of all we want to say a big congratulations and welcome to miami miami suits you well the winwood district is perfect for you when i came to a winwood a few years ago i literally my art started to be like this and i said okay that means something so whenever i thought of a first u.s boutique i was looking into new york but i said no i am going to miami i love the uh, i love the art here i come here and I smile, I see colors, I see beautiful things, uh, and it's, uh, it's refreshing for me and it's very inspiring. You're known for being very artful, very thoughtful with your designs. What is this current collection saying to us? Well, there is many collections out uh, right now in the store because uh, it's, uh, like I said, we design six to eight collections a year. It's a very fast-paced industry. And in order to be in major store, you have to design most every one, a new month uh, and a half a new collection. Behind us, you have the, the studio collection, which is a made-to-measure collection. It's all one of a kind. Uh, it's a lot of things are handcrafted on that. You have the cruise collection, which is starting to come out uh, now for the next December, January period, and you have the fall winter collection. I don't want to just think about clothes in terms of, okay, seasons and one and two. The pieces I like to design should be timeless, should be pieces that you like to wear for whatever reason and whenever. I don't also like to put them like, okay, this is a cocktail dress. This is, I like my piece to be more hybrid, to be more uh, nine, to, nine to nine, you know, whatever you need to do, you, you, you look good from morning to night. I like them to be performing and to be extremely comfortable so they provide well-being to the wearer. So it's a very personal way to look at fashion. Really. I like that you said you like for them to feel as if they're performing. It really looks that way. So when you see the designs, you really feel like they're performing. Tell us a little bit about your creative process. What inspires you in the creative process, in the design process? I'm a strong uh, technician. I, I do a lot of tests with materials. Material is my first inspiration. So really, uh, I work with new materials, always inventive. In, in I treat them, I do a different treatment to them, I, uh, I transform them, uh, and I, in that way I discover what they can do for you. If you could use three words to, to define your brand, what would those three words be? I'd like people to think that they are, first of all, beautiful. Second of all, they perform, so intelligent in a way. And last, probably artful and timeless.
From Tom Ford's animal print to the colored furs at Michael Kors and Dion Lee, or the hottest pinks at Alexander Wang. Plus Calvin Klein and Jason Wu's hipster plaids. We've got you covered on the runway's biggest trends. There's no stopping to the trends of fall winter at Runway Frenzy. Every Tuesday and Friday, London, 1900, DST, Paris, 2000, DST, Moscow, 2100.
Yeah.